for tuning in. My name is Doug Stevenson, and in this Firecast, I'll get you started with Firebase Remote Config. You may have noticed that it's kind of a pain to build, test, and publish a new version of your app just to change some hard-coded value in it. But with Firebase Remote Config, you could, instead, change that value in the Firebase console and have that affect your app without having to republish it. Remote Config gives you the ability to define a set of named parameters and assign them values in the console. Then, in your app, you can fetch those values and use them as you need. Anytime you change a parameter's value in the Firebase console, it will be made available to your app. If you want to make use of Firebase Remote Config, it's just a few lines of code to fetch the values and put them into place. The first thing to do is integrate Firebase into your app. If you haven't done that yet, check out this video first where I walk you through the basic integration, then come back here to continue with Remote Config. I already have an app that's using Firebase, so I'll add Remote Config to that and use it to change some of the behavior from the console. Here's a simple app that lets you type text into an edit text widget, and that gets overlaid on an image view with the Firebase logo on it, kind of like a meme. Right now, there's no limit to the number of characters you can type into it, which can be kind of awkward. So what I want to do is limit the number of characters that can be typed into the edit text widget so things don't get out of control. If I switch into my project in Android Studio and open up main activity, I can add a few lines of code to set the max length of that edit text. You can see I've hard-coded a value of 5 right here for now, but I'd rather be able to change that whenever I want without having to rebuild the app. I'll do a bit of coding for that. First, I need to configure my app to include the Remote Config SDK so I can move my hard-coded settings into it. I'll open my app's build.gradle and find the project dependencies block. Then I'll add the dependency for Firebase Remote Config. The latest version at the time of this recording is 10.0.1, but you should find and use the latest version. After that, I'll sync the project to make the APIs available. Okay, now I need to convert that hard-coded value into a remote config parameter. In main activity, I can get a reference to the singleton remote config object and store that in a member field. Then, in onCreate, I'll do three things. First, I'll configure remote config to enable developer mode. I'll say more about developer mode later. Second, I'll define a new parameter and assign it a default value. Here, I'm using a map to tell remote config about my defaults. I'll give my parameter a name of overlay underscore max underscore chars and give it a default value of five. The default will be used until the app is able to fetch a change to this parameter from the console. Third, I'll call the fetch method to tell remote config to download all the parameters I defined in the console. I'm passing it a zero for now, which is a cache expiration time, and I'll tell you what that means later. Fetch returns immediately with a task object, which tracks the progress of the download. Then I'll add a listener on it, which will get invoked when the fetch completes successfully. In the success callback, I'll choose to activate the new parameters using the activate fetched method. Any changes to the fetch parameters won't be accessible until they are activated like this. Also, I'll call the method from earlier that updates the max length of the edit text. And finally, in that method, I'll ask remote config for the current value of the parameter instead of hard coding it there. Alrighty, let's see how it works. When I type text into the box, you can see that it's limited to the default of five characters that I assigned in the map of default values. Typing more characters doesn't do anything, and that's what I expected. So what if I want to change this setting dynamically at the Firebase console? Let's look at the console for this project. In the list of features on the left, I'll click Remote Config. It's asking me to add my first parameter, so I'll go ahead and do that. I'll call it Overlay Max Characters exactly as I named it in my code and give it a value of 10. When I click Add Parameter, it records the value and lets me know that I should publish my changes when I'm ready. This parameter won't be seen in my app until I push the Publish button, so I'll go ahead and do that now. And if I switch back into the app, leave it, then launch it again, I can see that the new limit of 10 characters was fetched and activated. Now, with my app using Remote Config, I can change the max number of characters for the overlay text as often as I want. All I have to do is change its value in the console and publish the change. You should know that you can store different types of values in Remote Config. You can enter Boolean, Double, Long, and String values into the console, and each type is obtained through the client API with a different method. 
Since every value is stored as a string, you should take care to format them correctly so they can be parsed by the SDK when you access them. So, there are a couple things I mentioned before that need a little more explanation. First, fetched values are normally cached for 12 hours before another call to fetch will actually make a request for new values. The code I wrote to set the cache expiration to zero is helpful during development to let me get new values every time I make a call to fetch. This makes frequent value changes at the console easier to test. But you shouldn't publish your app like this. Instead, you should only use this SETI during development. In this code, I'm using the build config object to determine the best cache expiration. Second, you should know that the SDK normally imposes rate limiting on your request to fetch, so a poorly behaved app can't cause too much network traffic. When your app is being throttled like this, calls to fetch won't work for a while. But during development, you can enable developer mode to bypass this restriction, which makes it possible to test calling fetch repeatedly for new values. Again, only do this during development so you don't have problems in production. Third, you should give some consideration about when you call fetch to get new values and when you call activate fetch to make those new values available. If you only call fetch once in your main activity, it could be a long time before that happens again, and you'll end up with stale values. Also, if you activate some new parameters that change the user experience drastically, that could be kind of awkward for your users. To best deal with these issues, you can watch this other video by my colleague Todd Kerpelman. Okay, Remote Config can do even more than what I've shown here. It works in tandem with Firebase Analytics to provide a way to perform A-B testing with the value of a parameter. This helps you experiment to find out what settings your users prefer. Also, you can provide different values for a parameter based on factors like the user's analytics audience or a user property. This lets you provide a customized experience for your app, depending upon who's using it. You can learn about these things and more in the Firebase Remote Config documentation in the description below. And that's it for this Firecast. If you have any problems, you can leave a comment below or contact us through one of our support channels. Have fun remotely configuring your app, and I'll see you next time.